Hello, folks. Welcome to the Great Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Weber. Uh, I came up with this thing, the Great Stories Show. What I normally do on this podcast is uh, I sit here and I talk to uh, other individuals or maybe a couple people just about their life story and just hear how they came to know Christ and what it's looked like uh, in the context of their real life to follow Him. Uh, but at this point in time, uh, in case you didn't know, um, the the San Francisco Bay Area has enacted a uh, an essentially a lockdown or a lock-in. And uh, so that's why I'm naming this show Locked In, <laughs> episode one, because I'm planning on actually getting on uh, and, and doing one of these every day. Uh, here, here's basically the summary of it. If, if you're not familiar for those maybe across the country or, or whoever else is listening, is that uh, this coronavirus has come into the U.S. Uh, by various routes, and it started to spread. Uh, and it's gotten to a point where uh, our leadership and CDC and all that just has seen it as necessary to really just uh, try to, as much as humanly possible, just slow the transmission of this thing through the population. Uh, I mean, it it doesn't honestly look like we can stop it from working its way through uh, the American population. So it's it's going to kind of do that, and it'll do what it does. But the idea is that it just doesn't do it so quickly. So uh, it started with, like, limiting gatherings of a 1,000 people, and then it was down to 250. And then just even yesterday or this morning, it was down to the 65 or so, and then... It just kept getting more and more every couple hours. So you're hearing more and more stuff come out. And the president declares national state of emergency. And then uh, the California governor takes it a step further. And then now uh, the county of Alameda, which is where I live, uh, has gone into a basically a if you don't have to leave your house, they don't want you to. And I, I, I kind of get that. The part that I, I'm kind of struggling with myself is that um, I just I don't. I don't believe the Bill of Rights gets suspended because there's a, a flu and it just being told like you're, you're going to be arrested or fined if we see you out on the streets and your reason isn't good enough. Like That's just sort of weird. But I for sure won't be the one to test that. So <laughs> we're going to hunker down. And I know there's a lot of you out there, uh, a lot of my friends. I'm so glad you're tuning in um, and you're sort of maybe feeling a little lonely. I know the extroverts out there are probably going nuts already. And uh you know, this it's a it's a tricky time. It's amazing. I've never seen anything like this. It, it's a it's a fascinating uh, time, and I know that it's kind of scary. And there's there's a lot of folks that are just really worried just about the future and what this is going to look like, and what are the longer term uh, challenges with this. You know, there's there's folks that aren't being able to go to work, and they're not going to be able to pay bills. And I mean, this this could get very very complicated very quickly for a lot of people. And what I'm, what I'm trying, to, trying to encourage folks about is that really at, at the end of the day, it, this whole life thing that we're doing is, is about the glory of God. It's about Christ himself. Uh, he has come to this world not to uh, repair our, our day-to-day circumstantial issues, but he came to actually repair the curse of sin in this world. And, you know, all kinds of things can go wrong. You know, we can lose jobs, we could get sick, or we could have just a charmed existence that nothing ever goes wrong. But either way, our true hope and our true security lies only at the foot of the cross, only. And I think uh, during this time, uh, a lot of people's, you know, the things that people depend on to make their their life worth living or, or, or to give them purpose or stability, a lot of that's being stripped away. And I think uh, this is a, an incredible opportunity for Christians to to do two things, really. I think one is to just examine their own hearts and examine which parts of their hearts are actually loyal to these things of the world rather than in line with the Spirit of Christ. And on the other hand, it's I think it's also an incredible opportunity for Christians to just represent Christ to the world around them and be a source of encouragement and focus and, and just love and hope. And hopefully to... 
just introduce people to that hope that lies within each of us. And I think the, the best way we can do that is by seeking intimacy with our Creator uh, within our own life, within our own mind, within our own heart. And, and I think that is, that's truly the only thing that really changes our perspective on things. It's the only thing that, that brings out the fruits of the Spirit that we want desperately in our lives. And now, almost more than ever, you know, I, I want patience, I want goodness, I want kindness, I, I want self-control, you know, I, I want all these things. And I think those come to us through seeking intimacy with our Creator. It, it's a fruit of the Spirit. It, it's what grows when our Spirit is in line with Christ. And really, at the end of the day, He has done all the work necessary for that to happen. And and our our job uh, is actually very simple. It's simply to to position ourselves uh, to bask in His glory and and to seek that intimacy with Him in whatever ways we can. And, and there's not that many of those either. You know, I think He's given us the ability to look into His Word. He's been given us the the ability to actually speak to Him. He's given us the ability to worship Him, uh, and He's given us community uh, and and. That's pretty much it, really, when it comes down to it. And so my goal with this, these uh, locked-in podcasts, is that while we're locked in, we, we can lock in to the Spirit of God. We can actually leverage this time together. Uh, we can have some sort of community, just even through the headphones. Uh, you can get your family out there. Bring the kids over. I'm not going to use any big words or say anything weird you know, for these daily things, but we're going to open the Scriptures together. Uh, we're going to read some stories. We're going to read some parables. We're, I, I don't have a, you know, a reading plan for it. It's just going to basically be whatever kind of pops into my head from, from day to day. But hey, it's my show. I'll do what I want. Um, but we're going to open the Word. I'm, I'm going to read them out loud, and I'm just going to share with you kind of what my thoughts are about it. I don't claim to be some authority on it. I'm, I'm not teaching a class or preaching a sermon. This is just... Uh, it's a time for, for you and I, you the listener, and, and me the guy talking here, to just search God's Word uh, for what's in it. And I truly believe that, that when we read His Word, we're essentially reading God's mind. And I think the, the more often we share space in our head with the thoughts of our Creator, the more our thoughts will look like His. And I think that's that's a magical thing, and, and I, I'm encouraged, I'm eager, I'm excited uh, to actually, in, in some ways, honestly, be held accountable myself to just open his word every day in this process and, and see what's in it for me, see what's in it for you. And then if, uh, you know, if you're finding this to be a beneficial time, then share the episodes around there. Share, share it with your friends, your family, anybody who's locked down. My gosh, let's open this word together and just, uh, you know, share this, this journey that we're going through with our creator to help it focus us, our thoughts and all that. Anyhow... Uh, that's my little intro for the Locked In series that I'm starting here. Uh, I won't do such a long intro <laughs> every every day, for sure. Uh, we're, most days, we're, we're just going to jump right into the scriptures, I hope. So, with that said, uh, go ahead, take out your Bibles, uh, if you have them, and I hope you do. Um, we're going to be looking at a story that came across my mind Uh on Tuesday, and uh, just as I was reading it, I, I've just been thinking about it a lot more, and I just wanted to share my thoughts with you about it. So, crack the Bibles open to the Gospel of John, chapter 21, and we're going to be doing verse 15 through 19. So, we're again, we're in the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 15 through 19. And just while you're looking that up, I'll, I'll kind of set this up so that chronologically, uh, this story takes place after the resurrection of Christ. So he's he's lived his life, he's worked his miracles, he's gone to the cross, he died, he was buried, he rose again. And then now he's, he's basically doing a, a victory lap of sorts. <laughs> and he's going around and talking to his disciples and, and he's... Uh, showing himself to people, saying like, hey, look, I, I told you I'd come back, and here I am. And this is the portion of his return where he uh, uh, meets up with his, I guess, his former, you know, uh, road buddy, Peter, one of his disciples. 
And this is the same Peter that cut off the centurion's ear when they were fighting. And this is the same Peter that uh, when the rooster crowed, Peter says that he denied that he knew Jesus. You know, the, the people around says, oh, you're that guy. You're the one that traveled with Jesus. And he says, no, 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 it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I don't know that man. And so Peter at this point is feeling pretty crummy because he he did the thing he said he would never do. And he he denied his his savior, the guy that he thought was God, he said, I don't know him. And and so he's, you know, I can imagine that Peter's struggling with uh, a good bit of guilt in this section. So let, let's, let's read this. So again, John uh, 21, verse 15 through 19. <clears throat> Here we go. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, Follow me. And that is the word of the Lord for today. Amen. Amen. Uh, so going back to verse 15. So they, they finish breakfast and, and Jesus asks him this series of questions. Three questions. He asks him, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And something that really opened up this verse for me uh, is understanding what Jesus is talking about when he uses the word love. And I'm not a Greek scholar, but I've learned that there's actually six different words in Greek for the concept of love, whereas we only had one. You know, and and so there's all this, there's the phileo, there's the uh, gosh, I'm blanking on it. Anyway, there's <laughs> there's one word that basically is a, a perfect love. It's uh, there we go. It's the agape love. Gosh, it fell out of my head for a second. So agape love is a, a perfect, perfect love. Uh, it, it's the kind of love that uh, actually Paul talks about. Oh, if I could find this really fast, that'd be amazing. Paul talks about it. I think it's in the book of Corinthians. I can't find it really quick. But when when... When Paul is talking about what love is, he describes love. And a lot of you have heard this passage. He, he talks about how love is kind, love is patient, love is forgiving. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs. It is not envious. It does not boast. It does not, you know, all these things. He, he, he defines love as this just incredibly perfect thing. That's the, the agape love. That's the, that's the love that Paul is talking about as a perfect love, an unconditional love, a love that never fails. It doesn't, none of these things. And so when, when Jesus is asking Peter, he says, do you love me? What Jesus is saying is, do you agape me? Like, do you love me perfectly? And what Peter says, he says, uh, you know, the first time he says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then again, he says, you know, that I love you. Well, the, the love that, that Peter uses is the phileo love. Which which is not agape love. The phileo love is like it's what I, it's like the the Greek version of the bro hug is what I call it. It's like when you know when you're with your buddies or you're with your friends and and you know, hey man, how you doing? I'll see you later. Love you, bro. You're like, yeah, we're cool. You know, we're all right. You pat each other on the back like that kind of love. It's like a bro love. It's a friend love. It's like yeah, I don't you know I don't love you, but I you know. Yeah, we're cool. Yeah, right on. Yeah, I love you. So Jesus is asking him, he's looking him right, imagine this now, that he's looking him right in the eyes and he says, Peter, do you love me? Do you agape me? And Peter's like, you know, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I love you, bro. We're cool. And so Jesus asks him again, 
do you love me? And, you know, you can imagine that at this part, Peter's kind of, he's getting nervous because he's he says again, like, yeah, I mean, you know that I love you, bro. <laughs> then he says to him a third time, he says, Simon, son of John, do you love me? That's when Jesus is like, his voice gets lower. He looks at Peter and says, Peter, listen, do you love me? And, and now you can understand why Peter was so grieved, because he says to him a third time, do you agape me? And Peter's response is, is, so, is so deep here, because he says, Lord, he calls him Lord. You know, identifying his deity, he says, Lord, you know everything. And he says, you know that I phileo you, I, I bro love you. You know this. And essentially what what Peter is saying is no. Jesus is asking him, do you love me? And and Peter is, is kind of in a roundabout in a fancy way. He's saying, no. That's like when, uh, when someone gets a haircut and they ask you, like, what do you think? Is it good? And you're like, man, I think you've got just great hair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> What about the haircut? Yeah, you have you have great hair. Like there's just the it's very fine. It's very you know very straight. Uh, it, it just holds the you know the the curl and whatever. Like you're describing all this thing, but you never say you like the haircut. <laughs> so I don't, that's probably an awful example. Whatever. Either way, what what Peter is saying is he's saying no. I I don't love you like that. He says, Lord, my God, you know everything. And he's admitting, you already know this. Like, why are you asking me a third time? You already know the answer. And it's no. Jesus says to him, feed my sheep. And he says, truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted to. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. And this he said to him by what kind of death he was going to glorify God. Okay. So Jesus is actually communicating something very important to Peter because they've already agreed here. Yes, I. Jesus is basically, let me translate this into, into bro code for you. So what I think Jesus is telling him here is he's saying, Peter, I know that you don't love me like that. I know. And what Peter is expecting at this point, this is the risen Christ. He calls him Lord like, you're, you're God, here you are, you're back. You rose from the dead just like you said you would. I could imagine Peter sitting there. He's just like, I'm a total failure. Like, I, I let this guy down. I denied him. Like, I, I betrayed him. I said I never would. Now he's back. He's probably going to say, like, dude, you blew it. Like, you're done. Like, I'm, I'm done with you. you. You denied me? I'm denying you. Like, that, that's, I'm, I, I could only imagine that. that I've, I've never, you know, no one's ever seen a picture of the eyes of Christ, but I've always imagined that his eyes would be so knowing, so knowing. Imagine the, the creator of the universe, the son of God, the man that you saw do miracles, who rose from the dead, is now sitting in front of you asking you, do you love me? <laughs> and Peter just broken. Lord, no. Uh, I, I love you, you know, but no. And he's expected to be cast out, denied the way that he denied Christ. But that's not what Jesus is telling him. What Jesus tells him here, he says, you will stretch out your hands. And, and he, so blah, 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 blah. he says, so I, this he said to show what kind of death he was going to glorify God. What Jesus is telling him is that, no, I am not denying you the way you denied me. What I'm doing is actually commissioning you to serve me. You are going to, later on, this is the one he says, you are the rock on which I will build my church. That's not in this passage, but the same guy. Like, you are going to be commissioned greatly in my service, so greatly that you will actually have the opportunity to glorify me with your very life. Not only are you back in, but I didn't give you like some crummy job. I've invited you into the front row, the cutting edge, and you are going to go out and start my church. You're going to be one of the first guys to go out there and start telling people of who I am and what I've done. And we find out that's exactly what he does in the book of Acts. As Peter turns into a champion. And after saying this, his last words, 
Jesus said to him, follow me. Now, that's basically a very tender way of Christ saying, welcome back. Welcome back. And this, uh, so that, that's the reading for today. Those are my thoughts on it. And uh, man, I just want to encourage you people listening to this thing that, you know, it doesn't matter, again, the circumstances of our day to day. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, how many things we put in front of Christ, how many ways we deny him with our life, with our actions, with our words, just the way we treat people. Just it, There's all kinds of ways that we can feel just like Peter, where we have failed. We have failed just in so many ways. We've failed God. We've betrayed Christ. We've, we've done these things. We continue to do these things. And yet, and yet, Christ does not come to us and say, hey, you blew it. You're not good enough. I thought you might have been, but you're not. Get out. That that will never happen. See, these these knowing eyes of Christ will come into our lives and they will they will stare right at us. And they'll and I I just picture this in my head and it gets me all I don't know, full of feelings every time I do. But he says, I know. I know you don't love me. I know your sin better than you do. And he says, Come, you will glorify me with your life. Come, follow me. Feed my sheep. I'm blessed to be a follower of Christ. Uh, I'm blessed to be in his service. I'm, I'm blessed to even have this microphone in front of my face that I get to glorify him with my words. And my leading to you, my, my question to you, uh, just as you're processing that passage today, is what... What are those things uh, in your own mind, in your own life, that you're sort of holding on to as uh, the case against yourself? You know, Peter knew exactly <laughs> what was going on, and, and he knew what he was being convicted of. And I think each of us do, too. I think, though we will talk about being forgiven by Christ, there is still a record of wrongs that we have within ourselves that we haven't actually let ourselves accept his forgiveness for. And I encourage you just to process that, to think that through. What are you holding on to? What are you holding over yourself that Christ has already forgiven? And he's saying to you, follow me, follow me. Uh, so there's that. So uh, at the end of these, I, I just want to pray uh, just with myself here. and I'll, I'll share my prayer with you in, in this way. And I just encourage you when I'm done, just put push pause and just take a minute Think that through and just pray it for yourself. Uh, I'd love to hear some comments uh, either on the, on the Facebook page or on the Apple or Spotify or the iTunes or uh, YouTube. It's everywhere. Whatever. Leave some comments. You know, let's let's get some community going, even if it's just in these short little great stories lock in podcasts. All right. So let's let's go ahead and pray, and then uh, we'll cut it off. All right. All right, Jesus, uh, I I look so forward to to seeing those eyes of yours. Um, I can't imagine what they see. I've I've forgotten the vast majority of the things in my own heart and my own life, the the ways that I've betrayed you. I, I I have forgotten the vast majority of it, but you know it. You know it still, um, even though. I continue, you know, you know, the things I haven't even done yet are in front of your face, God. And when you're on that cross, you said it's finished. You said, yeah, I, I see it and I'm, I'm taking that. I'm going to take that for you and I'll accept that punishment. And, uh, they are to me as forgotten. I remember them no more. And that's incredible, God. I, I, I pray that you would, man, can you help me? to accept that forgiveness, God. Can you help me, like like Peter, to just admit, like, yeah, Jesus, I, I don't actually love you. I say I do. I, I sing the songs, and, and I desperately want to with everything I have, but I don't. I don't love you like you love me. I never could. That's not even possible, but thank God you don't expect me to. You love me still, and you say, feed my sheep. You say, follow me. You say, glorify me with your life. And Lord, it's a privilege to do that. I thank you so much. Um, I pray that those listening, uh, that we can journey with that together. I pray that as we're 
opening scripture just each day like this, that you would lead us to actually grow in our intimacy with you, and that that would bring out fruits in our spirit that we wouldn't have had otherwise, that we could look back on this time uh, as as we're kind of locked up and life is just so weird, God, that uh, you'd actually bring fruit out of it, and, and we could see how you would turn these uh, big old fat lemons into lemonade. <laughs> Uh, God, we love you. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for listening. This is only episode one. I'm going to keep going. Uh, If you have any scriptures that you'd like to suggest or, again, comments or anything like that, uh, please comment. Send them this way. Let's do them. Uh, Also, if, uh, you know, I I, I don't do this thing to be big. It doesn't make money. It's not not about that. I, I just want the name of Christ to be big. I want people to hear the message that's in these pages. Uh, so man take advantage of this time people are bored they got nothing to do share the episodes send it around let's uh let's share these words together all right thanks for listening see you tomorrow <laughs>